right. Good evening, good evening, good evening. All right, y'all know what we do. Y'all know what we do. Bibles, pens, notebooks, ready to write, ready to study. Thank you for joining me another Wednesday for Chain Breaker. Ooh, I got some good stuff, I believe, today because the Holy Ghost gave it to us, right? Ha! Huh. I want to talk about today, who's going to check us? Who's going to check our authority? Who's going to check us? It's only, only one person that can check us, and that is the Holy Ghost, amen? Because we know in Jeremiah that he's called us before we were even in our mother's womb. He's called us. He's ordained us. He's chosen us before the foundation of the world. He calls us to be prophets, apostles, teachers, evangelists. He's called us to be pastors. He called us to rule, to reign, to subdue, to take authority over the, over the earth realm. Amen. He called us. He's chosen us. So we don't have to walk timid. We don't have to walk afraid. But you know, we got haters. We have people in the earth realm who always want to check us and, 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 and question us who we are. You know, Jesus did it. You know, Jesus, people question him. But so we don't have to count it strange or be offended because people are always wondering who, 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 uh, or, 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 or who who do we think we are or always question our authority. So come on, take the chip off your shoulder. Don't be offended because people are always questioning why you sing the way you do or why you preach the way you do or where your authority come from. So come on. Don't worry about it. Don't count it strange. Don't get offended. Don't 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 worry about it. Come on. This is something that was 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 done for the foundation of the world. Just know who you are. Know who you will belong to. Know who have called you and who you are accountable to. Amen. That's all you need to worry about. That's all you need to worry about. But you know, this started at the very beginning. Come on, Lucifer was kicked out of the kingdom, out of heaven, because he questioned God's authority. He wanted to assert God's authority by saying, hey, I can, I, can do, I can do exactly what you're doing, and I can be even better. So he got kicked out of heaven, and two-thirds of the angels got kicked out of heaven also because he wanted to be just like God, a higher than God. Come on. Come on. So people are going to always question your authority or want to try to, to try to override your authority. So that's why you don't need to size yourself up. You don't need to try to be like somebody else or compare yourself to somebody else. Just be who you are and know who you are. Amen. Who called you? Amen. And even, even in that, even when Moses, when God told Moses, look, go to Pharaoh. Go to Pharaoh and say, look, let my people go. And Moses said, look, well, whose authority I'm going to tell him who sent me? And God said, look at here, just tell him I am. Who I am sent you. I am sent you. Because you know Pharaoh's going to say, who do you think you are, Moses, to come to me? You just a man. What authority? Who do you think you are to come and tell me? To let these people go. I'm the ruler of the kingdom. I'm the man in charge. You, who do you think you are? So God said, tell him I am. Sent you. Come on. So that's what we want to talk about in the day. Who's going to check you? Who's going to check you? Especially when you know who you are. When you're on assignment. Huh? When you know you were called. You and you're an ambassador for the kingdom. Hmm? When you know, when you know, you don't have to be approved by anybody. When you know, then you are anointed. When you are appointed. When you are on an assignment. When you have an agenda from heaven. Amen? Come on. So let's go to the scripture. Let's go to the, uh, let's go to the scripture. Let's go to the word about this. Hey man, I'm not saying for you to walk around and be prideful. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Y'all, y'all get, get with me now. 
I'm not talking about go around being prideful. I know we have to get, get hands laid on by the presbytery. I know all that. I know the protocol. So come on, don't, 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 don't get, don't get beside yourself here. I know all of that. I know all of that. Come on. I know there's an order. I know there's a protocol. I know that. I know that. I know that. But let's talk about this right here. Let's go to Mark. Let's go to Mark. Mark 11, starting at verses 27. You know, Jesus did some radical things. He did some radical things on the earth for him. And that's one thing we need to back up and really begin to read this Bible in a different way. Because we think our God, Holy Ghost Jesus, is just some timid people walking in the earth realm. We have this picture in our mind uh, based on the pictures of, oh, when we were at our grandparents' house, we would see this nice Jesus on the wall with this nice little beautiful the little soft eyes you know this beautiful hair just poised you know so meek and mild you know then we would have this picture she would have on the wall with him having the lamb on his lap you know just just rubbing the lamb on the lap you know just so gentle you know then she would have this other picture on the wall with him sitting with the children gathered around him you know because y'all remember, y'all know y'all grandparents had some of these same pictures on her wall, you know. So we have this picture grafted in our minds that the Godhead is just so gentle, meek, and mild. Yes, that's some of his characteristics. Yes, he is. But come on, our God is a gangster. He's a mob boss. Huh? He's a gangster. He's hood. He's ruthless. Huh? He's treacherous. He don't play any games with us or with the enemy. So we need to stop thinking that he is just some just little nice, timid, meek, mild, you know, passive God. We serve a father, a God that means business when it concerns his children, when it concerns his kingdom, when it con concerns the things um, concerning his kingdom. He means business. Amen. He means business. He has a posture in himself that's a, that is of authority. He knows who he is. Amen. And we need to have that same posture of an assurity and confidence about who we are. Huh? So who can check us? Who can check us when we know who we are? We don't need to prove ourselves to anybody when we know who we are. So, so let's, 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 let's go to the script. Let's go to the script. Let's go to the scripture. Let's go to the scripture. Right. Verse 27, Mark 11 and 27. It says what? Then came again to Jerusalem. And as he was walking in the temple, you know, Jesus always did some stuff in the temple, at the church. Man, he always taught the church. He always taught the church. Let's, let's, let's read on. And the chief priests and the scribes and the elders came to him and began saying to him, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority to do these things? Now let's back up for a minute. The reason why they were coming to check Jesus because they were offended about what happened a little while back. See, they were in the temple selling doves and selling merchandise in the temple. So what Jesus did, Jesus went and tore up the temple, turned some tables, and messed up their merchandise. And see, messed up their selling stuff in the temple. See, they were turning God's temple, his place of worship into a den of thieves see so God went and messed that up went over and tore up the house amen put the house back in order brought them to shame that apostolic anointing came into the church and began to put the the Pharisees and the Sadducees that false doctrine begin to put things back into perspective 
and huh, and pride began to rise up because it put them to shame. So now they want to come on the scene and begin to ask them, who give you the right? Who give you the authority to do these things? See, that's what happens when you have people that are walking in false doctrine, false teachers. People are doing things with, um, uh, out of self-righteousness. Uh, they've been called uh, out of their flesh, uh, out of their own will, are uh, being called out of because they think being called into the apostolic or the prophetic or out of the fivefold is something, fivefold ministry is something glamorous. Uh, it's a money, uh, money movement thinking that you you because you're a prophet that you can gain a lot of money or wealth. No, 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 no. That's not called into the fivefold ministry. If you're doing it God's way, it's not a wealthy system. Man, it's not a wealthy system. It's a it's a system to build up God's kingdom and God's people. Amen. There's a way you can prosper if you're doing it God's way because he wants his people to prosper when you are building his kingdom. Yes, he, we, we can prosper. That's what he wants when we're doing it right the right way. But we're, we're doing it when we wanted to do it fifthly or doing it and as a howling, then God is not pleased with that. But see, that's what was happening. God, Jesus came in with the apostolic anointing and he began to tear up the temple. He began to put things in order and into the right perspective. So they became shame. So now they want to come in and question his authority. And see, and that's what happened to me and my husband in this region that we're in. Because we have a great apostolic grace. And we begin to tear up religious systems in this region. So the, the 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 churches in this region, because we don't do things the way they do it, uh, we come and we break up certain religious patterns. They want to try to check us and say that we're mean, we're hard, um, we don't fellowship, or we don't do things the way that. No, we don't, because we don't we don't get with the with with the norm or with the status quo. That's not why we were sent to a region. That's not why you were sent to a region to jump on board with the status quo. If God sent you to a region, it's to break up the fallow ground. It's to bring, it's to root up. It's to set things in order. It's to build, huh? It's to overthrow a principality that is, 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 is ruling that region. He wants to bring light to that region. Amen. He wants to build a kingdom. He wants his glory to shine in that region. So you're not going to be liked in, in a region if you're coming to do things God's way in that region. So yes, when you're coming to bring a prophetic or apostolic order in a region that has been uh, oppressed or that has been bound uh, that uh, that has been bound by religion, um, then yes, your authority is going to be checked. Hmm? You want to be checked, but you have to stand your ground. So you don't need to offend or you don't need to uh, defend why you are here or why you are doing things the way you are doing. You are going to offend people when you are turning tables. I mean, when you are setting things in order in a region. So you don't need to go and, and, and prove or justify why you are doing the things the way you are doing. You just need to set your standard and continue to stay in the order that God is telling you to stay in. If he is telling you to go, go. If he is telling you to, to stay, stay. If he is telling you to stand, stand. Amen? But look at here. In 27, he said, They came again to Jerusalem, and as he was walking in the temple, the chief priests and the scribes and the elders came to him, verse 28, and began saying to him, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? authority to do these things mind you they came in the spirit of offense they were offended 
They were offended. They were trying to trip him. They were trying to trap him so um, they can bring an accusation against him, okay? This is where wisdom has to come in. This is where the discerning of spirits have to come in. You have to know the motive behind and the spirit behind when people are trying to check you. Hey Amen. This is where you have to know how to respond, when to respond, and if to respond. Hey Amen. Verse 29, Jesus said, and Jesus said to them, let me ask you a question. In other words, this is the gangster that came out of Jesus. See, he said, I will ask you one question and you answer me. And then I will tell you by what authority I do these things. Now, Jesus said, verse 30, was the baptism of John from heaven or from men? Now, you answer me. Okay? Now, since you want to come with a trick question for me, let me give you a parable. Since you want to give me a parable, let me give you a parable. Because since Jesus already knew what their motive was, what type of spirit they were coming in, amen, he already knew. See, God will give you, hmm, he will give you the person's intentions. He will let you know if your discerning antennas are up. He will always let you know the mannerism and the motive behind why they are coming to you with this anyway. See, that's why you can't just let a person smile or a person demeanor when they come into you. You can't just take people for face value. Not saying that you always being critical, always being judgy, always being on your guard. No, when you're walking in the apostolic grace and an apostolic anointing, the discerning of spirits has to be prevalent. The prophetic has to be prevalent. Has to be prevalent. Has to be prevalent. Has to be prevalent. Amen. So Jesus said, I'm going to ask you a question for your question. He said, then it's verse 31. So they began reasoning among them among themselves saying, oh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. So they knew they had to be strategic because they already knew who they was dealing with. See, when people come to you with these type of questions, they already know who they're dealing with. They already know you anointed. They already know you appointed. They already know you are powerful. They already know that you are set in this region. But they're just trying to trap you and trick you. Trying to find your weakness. Trying to find your flaw. Trying to see a, a way that they can um, mislabel you. Trying to find a way that they can find a way to... to, to, to um, Cause your name, uh, to you know, to mess up your name. They trying to find a way, trying to find a way. So this is what they were doing here. So so they was in their reasoning. Okay, we gotta we got to make sure we answer this here properly. We gotta make sure we answer them properly. So see see. So if we say we from from heaven, he will say. Uh, then why? Do you not believe in him? See, they already knew who he was. They already knew the answer. So when people come to us this way or you this way, they already know who you are. They already knew the answer because that is the first thing that they said. They already know you are a prophet. They already know that you are called. They already know you are appointed. They already know that you are chosen. They already know you were sent because that's the first thing that's going to come out of their mouth. You don't need to prove it. You don't need to tell them. You don't need to, I'm an apostle. I'm an a prophet. I'm, you don't need to open up your mouth and prove nothing. Nothing. They're going to tell you who you are. Hmm? They're going to tell you who they are. You don't need to walk around with a tag on your car. You don't need to make a business card. You don't need to make a big billboard saying that so and so and so and so. You don't need to do any of that. You don't need to do any of that. You don't need to do any of that. You don't need to sound the alarm. You don't need to do any of that. 
They know you are in the region. You just do what the Lord told you to do. You don't have to blare, blare lights. You don't need to do put a big show. You don't need to do anything. They know you are already in the region. They know that you are already called and sent. They already know. Huh? They already know. So this is what they said in verse 31. Let's read it again. They begin reasoning among themselves saying, if we say from heaven, he will say, then why are you not believing? Okay. 33. But shall we say from men, they were afraid of the people. For everyone considered John to have been a real prophet. A real prophet. So people know if they go out and say something about you, then they will be even in trouble with the people because people know that you men and women of God. See, people know that you 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 work in miracle signs and wonders that the prophetic word that you have given are, are, are accurate. So they got to be careful what they say to the people, how they try to spread bad things about you around the com community because they might be stoned. They know that you have killed their daughter or, or their son. They know that the prophetic word that you've spoken to them has come to pass. That the chains have been broken off of their lives because of what you've spoken over their lives. Now, they know those things. So they know they can't go to the community and spread bad things about you. So they got to be careful with that. That's what it's saying here. Because they know you're a real prophet. They know you're a real apostle. They know you're a real teacher, a real pastor. They know this. They know this about you. So they got to be careful there too. So answering Jesus, they said, we don't know. Now they want to be stupid. Now they want to be stupid. We don't, we don't know. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know who they are. We don't know who. We don't know. And Jesus said to them, nor will I tell you by what authority I do these things. See, see, Jesus was gangster. And that's the type of posture we need to take as men and women of God. We don't need to sit out here and blab the alarm and try to prove who we are to people. Long as you know you are called, you are set aside, you are appointed, you are set apart. You have chosen before the foundation of the world. You got fruit that are remaining, huh? You are bearing fruit over and over and over. You got signs that follow, huh? Come on. You are performing miracle signs and wonders, huh? The proof is in the pudding of your life. You don't have to prove to that certain group of people that want to trip you and trap you because they don't want you in their region. They don't want you in their city. They don't want you hmm, because they have an agenda, because they got an assignment. Hmm? And you coming to overthrow it. You coming to bring shame to it, confusion and conf con confoundment to it. Huh? So your authority, especially when you're doing the things the way the Lord is telling you to do it, especially if you are taking counsel of the Lord like David did. David did not do anything unless he inquired of the Lord. And people are not going to always get with that. People are not going to always agree with that. Because people are going to always want you to do what they want you to do when they want you to do it. And when you are on assignment for God, huh? They're not going to always agree. Every time you look around, they got to ask the Lord. They got to pray about it. Yes, you cannot get on everybody's bandwagon. You cannot link up with everybody in every move. You know? Just because every popular song, I mentioned this yesterday in Bible study, just because every song is po popular, a song is popular, don't mean it's right for your ministry. Don't mean it's right. Don't mean the lyrics is, is right. It may sound good, but is it scripture? Is it faith? It may sound good, but is it faith-based? 
You got to be so very careful. You may be speak. It may sound good, but you may speak, maybe singing doom and gloom, more doom and gloom on your already problem, on your already situation. But it's the popular Christian song right now. We have to be so careful. You know, and it could be, it's a, it could be a good artist, a popular artist. And it's, it's okay. You know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not talking bad about the artist. I mean, but, but that song, that, that particular song just, just may not be the right song for you for that season. Be very careful of your season. Is that the word for your church? Is that the song for your church? For your ministry flow? Hmm? Come on, what is the sound for your church? What is the sound, the ministry sound, the musical sound for your church? Make sure it flows. Make sure it flows. So you have to be so careful. Be so careful. Everything is str strategic for your life. Everything has to flow. Everything. Because one breach, one gap can throw things out of sync. So yes, we need to inquire about everything. And once the church, once the people of God get back to that principle, man, we will begin to see the windows of heaven open up over our lives again. We will begin to see the bountiful blessings of God begin to flow in our lives again. Because we've gotten to that place where, where it said the end times will begin to show and people will become self-righteous, lovers of themselves. We won't be seeking counsel of God anymore. We will begin into our own thinking, the things that we think is good for us. You know, it's about me, what I like. What I want to do, again, self-pleasers, lovers of myself, what I want to do. Where we're just kicking God out of the picture now. Hmm? That's the word where this world is going to, what I like. But that's not God's principle and God's order. Proverbs 3 and 5 says what? God, I will seek you in all things. Trust you and acknowledge you in all my ways, God, and you shall direct my path. In everything I do, we need to inquire of God. Everything that we do, man, if we say our steps are ordered by him, if our life has been predestined by him, then He, if he has written out our plan of our life, then seem like we need to be checking with him. If he's known us before we've in our mother's womb, then seem like we need to be checking in with him. Huh? We need to be going back to the playbook because he wrote it. He wrote our lives. And dropping pride and arrogancy like we know ourselves. We do not know ourselves. We do not know ourselves. We did not create ourselves. God created us. He know us better than we know ourselves. He, yeah, he does. So don't be ashamed and get caught up in your, 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 your glam, your fam, your, your, your Instagram likes and your YouTube likes and you know, that's what this world is, is it? That's my grandbaby. Oh, Lord, him the sweetie pie. <laughs> oh, him the sweetie pie. You know, we getting into all into this, 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 this likes. We caught up into that more than us checking with him. We checking in with, with our likes. You know, we judging ourselves by that. Then judging ourselves, God, am I where you want me to be? Am I doing what you want me to do? You know? I'm seeing people trying to compete and, and do things based on what's popular on the IG. Okay. The aesthetics like likes uh 
so rough Sophia rough and said your aesthetics you you doing what she's doing you you mimicking what she's doing She's Sophia Ruffin. There's nobody else in the world is like Sophia Ruffin. Nobody can do it like Sophia. Nobody else can do it like Apostle Eckhart. He has his own identity, and I love him so much. He he, he is not trying to be like anybody else. It's so many people that is doing the apostolic, but it's nobody else like Apostle John Eckhart. Man, it's nobody else like him. He's not trying to get up like anybody else. You know. And I govern myself um, like like him and like Sophia Ruffin. As, and, and they keep me grounded by be you. Be you. Be who you are. I love many people on IG. I love many people that's on Facebook. I love it. I love it. But I keep myself grounded by listening what they, what those two say. By, be yourself. Because you can find yourself getting to a pattern where because they got, and many others got so many likes, now you want to try to do what they're doing. No, 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 no. Now you're losing your identity. Now you are you losing who you are. Huh? I cannot be like Sophia. I cannot be, I cannot be like um, Apostle Eckhart. I cannot be like any of the other prophets or anybody else that's out there. I have to be me. You are watching me because I'm me. I'm watching Sophia Ruffin because she's her. I'm watching Cindy Trim because Cindy Trim is, tr is, is Cindy Trim. I'm watching Apostle Eckhart because he's Apostle Eckhart. And just because I didn't name your name don't mean I'm not watching you. Come on. That's just those names that's just popping up to me right now. There's many other, others of you that I watch on IG that I absolutely love. But I've been following Apostle Eckhart for eons and eons and eons and eons of years. You know, so he's going to definitely come, come to mind. Most of his books are over, over here, but he come, he may, and Cindy Tramp, they mainly come to mind for me, but I don't pattern myself after, after them, you know, walk your walk, your course. That's how people are going to gravitate to you. Just like I gravitate to them. And they have gravitated to others. Sophia Ruffin says she's gravitated to Apostle Eckhart. But that's how she got her deliverance and, uh, and other things and other people she's gravitated to. Hmm? So look, be yourself. Stay in your lane. It's okay to have YouTube accounts, Instagram accounts, but stay you. Because you have people just for you. I have people that's going to get delivered, chains broken, just because I'm being me. And I love being me. Let me tell you something. It has taken a whole lot of work for me being me. A whole lot of work. A whole lot of work for me being me. And I'm not going to try working, trying to be like somebody else. When it took a whole lot for me to be me. I had a whole lot of work for chains to be broken off of me for me to love being me. And now for me to get at this stage of life to start working to be like somebody else, that don't make sense. That don't make sense. So love being you. Love being you. So don't be intimidated about you and the gifts that you have. In you. God put them in you. Nobody else got them. They may look like you. They may sound a little similar to you. But nobody has the gifts like you have. Huh? You're an original. Love being you. Huh? Love being you. So somebody can love listening to you. You know what I'm saying? So if you sound like somebody else. Nobody's going to like listening to you. Because you sound like somebody else. You know? Love being you. Love your sound. Love your voice. Hmm? Love you. Love you. And then who don't like you? Who don't like your sound? Then they can go listen to somebody else. Hey, check it. Who go check you, boo? You be you. Me be me. Hmm? 
There is a realm of people. There's a sphere of people that's going to love you. Ooh, that's going to love you. That's going to love you. That's going to love you. Stay in your sphere. I don't care how many small likes we have right now, but it's going to grow if we continue to be us, me. We're going to grow. Just like the ones that I named, they grew. They were small at a season. You know, they grew, but they stayed true to who they were, who they are. We got to stay true to who we are. And then there's our season. When, hey, them likes going to go up. Hey, that YouTube channel likes are going to grow up. But we got to stay true to who we are now. Amen. These are growing seasons, developing seasons. Amen. But look at here. If you don't allow nobody to check you now, hey, you ain't got to worry about nobody checking you later. Mm -hmm. Because you're developing on who you are and you're knowing who you are now. It's very important. It's very important. Can you imagine at the level that some of the people that I've named, that the people that are trying to check them, that they don't even let us know that are checking them? <laughs> They're not even phased, not even moved. So if you're letting people check us, we're letting people check us at this stage. Oh, man, when we really begin to grow and get at a higher level, ah, we can't get offended now. Hmm? We definitely can't get offended later. Hmm? Don't have room for that in the kingdom. Jesus didn't have room for that. Huh? So he gave him a question with a, with a, with a question. Huh? Who go check me? I know, I know, I know who, who I'm operating through and why I'm operating and what authority I have. Do you know what authority you have? Hmm? Do you, do you know? That's the question. Do you know? <laughs> That's what he asked them here. Do you know what authority? And if you don't know what authority, then guess what? In a conversation, we don't have nothing to talk about here. I don't need to tell you where I come from, who I come from, who my mama is, who my daddy is. I don't need to tell you all of that. If you don't know, then I don't know. Just that simple. This is just that simple. Just that simple. Just as Jesus never, when he came on there, he did not need the accolades. He didn't need the likes. Guess what? He didn't want the likes. The likes wasn't necessary. When he did the the healing and the deliverances, he many times told the people, don't tell nobody, don't tell nobody I did this. Because he didn't want the attention. He didn't want all of that. Matter of fact, there was a time when he was on the seashore and he said all he saw, all the people coming, he was like, man, I don't feel like all this today. So he got in the boat and he thought, y'all, let's cast off. I don't feel like all this today. <laughs> Y'all know how we are sometimes. Man, just got through preaching, just got through delivering, and then now people want to come to you after you done emptied out. Now they want to ask you a question. Now they want you to give them a personal prophecy. Now they want you to do all this. You tired. You've emptied out. You have nothing else. You know, just, just take me to my office. Take me to my car. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. You know, I'm ready to go to a restaurant, eat. I'm ready to go home, go to bed. Get me out of here. You know? And so, you have to know. As long as you know the authority and who've called you, that's all that set us. You don't have to walk around with a badge. You don't walk around, have to walk around, you know, with the clergy collar. You don't have to walk around, you know, with your resume, all the theology schools you went to. You don't have to walk around, you know, with the license tag, you know, with the, with the cross on the back clergy. You don't have to walk around, you know, telling people, you know, who you are and what church you've gone through. You don't have to. You don't have to do all of that. You don't have to do all of that. Your fruit follow. Your fruit follow. That's when people know. People know anyway who you are. Because the fruit is there. You're bearing fruit. That's when God's glory. That's the definition of God's glory. Because fruit, fruit is there. The fruit explains it. The fruit explains it. That's the only explanation people need. The fruit is there. Jesus had the fruit. 
the fruit, the evidence was already there. That's the explanation enough. That's what faith is, right? <laughs> the evidence. The fruit is already there. So I thank you for today. Another lesson. <laughs> Dig deep within yourself. Huh? Pull out your identity. Your purpose in the earth realm. We were taught Sunday about your two mites. Pull out your two, two mites. Huh? Your assignment. Your assignment. Your purpose in the earth. Huh? Give God your two mites. Your gifts. Your talents. Cast them in. Cast them in like that lady did. Huh? She only had two mites, but she cast them in. What are your gifts? What are your purpose? Cast them in. Hmm? Because when you cast yours in, then you are making far room from somebody else's gifts to be cast in. Huh? Go back to our YouTube channel for Driven Ministries. Go back. If you want to li listen to more to that, go to our YouTube channel for Driven Ministries to listen to that. Man, it was powerful Sunday. It was awesome, awesome. But even for Chain Breaker channel, come on, like, subscribe, share, tell a friend about what we got going on here. And I pray and I know, because you keep coming back watching, you know, that chains are even being broken off of your life with what we're doing here every Wednesday. And I pray that you're going back looking again and again and again. You know, I do at, at this channel. You know, back in the day, we had uh, cassette tapes. We had CDs. We would go and listen to over and over and over. We had Kenneth Hagen. We had Kenneth Copeland. We had Frederick Casey Price, man. And we would plug in, plug in, plug in, and listen to Faith Faith tapes over and 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 over. And now we have it even greater. You know, we got YouTube. You know, we don't have to have that big old box full of cassette tapes in the car anymore. Well, that's my about to tell my age, right? And we don't have to have that uh, case with all those CD slots in anymore. And then we would have them over our visor. We had favorite CDs in there. We don't have to have that anymore. We got YouTube right here on our phone. We have YouTube. You know, we can go to now. Facebook, we can go back to and listen to recordings over and over again. Come on. So I unction you. Let's get back. Because faith comes by hearing and what? Hearing. And guess what? Hearing. And guess what? Hearing what? By the word. We have to get back to those principles again where we are hearing and hearing and hearing. You know, we're busy hearing this, I'm about to say something, this stuff on IG. You know, uh, this, the, 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 the latest thing going on on IG. You know, get back to hearing the word. Come on, there's some great things going on about the, in the word. YouTube, IG, Facebook. Get back to listening to the word. There's some great inserts that some great teachers are giving. Plug into those things. Get faith things back into your ear. Get yourself built back up. God is still real, living, active, powerful, quick. Then a two-edged sword. His word is still today. Gird yourself up. Get excited again about the word. Come on. Whew. I love it. I love it still. I love his word still. I love his word still. I'm excited still about what God is doing in my life and the people of God's life. Huh? Still. 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 So I love you. And I look for you again next Wednesday. And I'm excited, and I declare that you are still excited. And if you're not, you are stirring yourself up in the things of God again. Because these are excited times to be a part of the kingdom of God. These are excited times to be people of God, children of God. These are some of the richest times of God. These are some of the wealthiest times to be a part of the kingdom of God. So I thank you 
and I love you and I bless you and I declare that you have a prosperous week, that this will be one of the best weeks that you've ever had in your life and I bless you in Jesus' name.